I'm going to present in English, unless you guys want me to present in Chinese. <laughs> okay, so... So I'm going to spend a little um, briefly to talk about the power of the makers community, especially uh, why it is so crucial um, <clears throat> here, in, <clears throat> here in Barcelona. So we've seen this you know, almost every day in the news. There's 26% of unemployment in adults uh, today in Spain. But what's more, even more alarming is that there's 55% of unemployment uh, among youth. We're talking about one every two young adults coming out of the universities have no jobs. We have talked a lot um, throughout the conference about you know, where we came from and our current system and the repercussions of the Industrial Revolution. So I'm not going to bore you in that, but I wanted to bring up those keywords that we have talked about, which is standardization and mass production. And we have noticed that you know, these kind of systems have spilled over in our workspaces and in our, um, in, our, in our classrooms. And what we are doing is actually standardizing employees. And we're also mass educating our children. And what happens also is that we're converting, we have, becoming, uh, we have become a society, which is, you know, we've talked about this, based on hierarchy. And of course, if you have a very vertical hierarchical structure, um, people, we learn to follow instructions from the, from, the guy in, uh, from the guy in the top, the boss or the teacher. Uh, we have also learned to simply rely on other people. We kind of lost this capacity of doing things our own. We've also become kind of fixated on perfections. So failure become unacceptable. And the last thing is that we have taught, we were taught, so we were so ingrained with this sort of perfection in life that, you know, we have to go to school, get good grades so that we can go to university, a good university, get good grades so that you can get a good job, um, buy a house, buy a car, get 2.4 kids. But we've just seen the statistics. It's not working. And it's, you know, one every two young adults is still jobless. So um, what we're trying to do is, what, at, what, um, at MOM, Makers of Barcelona, what we're trying to do is break some of these kind of uh, limitations that we're, we're facing today. So who are we? We're MOM, Makers of Barcelona. We, we were founded about a year and a half ago, and we're a thousand square meter of what we call a mental gym. And uh, we are a community of creative geeks, which includes those artists, designers, uh, innovative hipsters, those hackers and inventors, and those that are business savvy, the startups and entrepreneurs. But there's a common interest among all three groups. We're all makers. We've kind of taken the definition of what a maker is and kind of, you know, broaden it and include any person that is self-sufficient, passionately driven, fully capable, and highly motivated. Until now, makers have always been sort of, you know, defined as someone who makes things that are very tangible. And we really believe that a maker is anyone that, you know, someone that can make things happen for, them th for themselves, whether it's tangible or virtual. So, this is our space. Whoops, sorry. This is our space. And we provide, what we do is we provide share resources and knowledge. We also um, provide an environment that we try to foster um, collaboration. And we recently also um, begin our uh, collaboration and fully supportive of our partners, which is an independently run. Um, Makerspace, which is housed inside of MOB. And um, it's the, as far as we know, it's the, f the first and the only nonprofit community run makerspace in Barcelona. And these guys right here are making a um, remote vision helmet for the Maker Fair. We had this last weekend on the 26th of June. It's the first um, mini Maker Fair in Barcelona. In fact, it's the first in Catalonia and the first in Spain. It's the first actually in the Iberian um, Peninsula. So we're really proud of that. For those who doesn't know what the event is, um, the Maker Fair is a one to two day festival where we get together, all the makers, we built, play, hack, craft, 
and make. And people came from all over the Barcelona as well as all over Spain to participate. Children and adults alike. And we had makers actually traveled all over from Italy and even from Japan to participate in the event. And there's one thing that we have learned that day, which is very important for us. The makers community in Barcelona is actually without any age limit. There's no minimum skills requirement. There's no gender gap. There's no any uh, cultural or class differences. We all kind of came together, and all we wanted to do was make and to share. And the turnout was extraordinary. In total, we were eight organizers, 10 volunteers, 30 makers that presented their projects, and over 2,500 visitors that came and visited us that day. So we're very ha happy with the outcome. Um, and I'm just going to also briefly talk about, you know, what, what is all this fuss about the maker movement? Why, why now? You know, we have tools forever, and we you know, mix stuff. So, but why now? Why is it so crucial now? We've seen this already a couple of times, and you know, I just wanted to make the point that we came from the digital revolution, everything in the clouds, in the internet, in the virtual realm, and there's definitely a need to shift those digital things into concrete, tangible realities, and this is where we are now. But the, the point I wanted to make is that she's now equipped, and um, she's not just equipped with any tool, she's equipped with you know, two things. Info access to information. Information is now ubiquitous. It's also instantaneous. We can find every single kind of tutorial we can, we can think of online. And uh, like the one Hannah shared with us earlier today, I can't you know, wait to get my hands on and make some of that massage me <laughs> jacket. But we also have access to cheap technology, 3D printers, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis. And in the com in combinations of those things, and notice that you know she's holding a drill that has all these you know network, which is representative of the combinations of the two things: information and technology. And there's also no uh, no coincidence that there's a badge that says, "If you can think it, you can build it," because now we are equipped. Have you guys ever seen you know a kid running to his parents, his or her parents, saying, "Mommy, mommy, mommy." Have you seen what I've made? And you see this little sparkle in their eyes and the magic in their eyes. Now, when was the last time we've seen an employee, let's say, running to his boss, saying, boss, 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 you know? Have you seen this report that I have made? So we've kind of somehow lost that magic or that initiative of wanting to make things. But in Barcelona, we've noticed that there's a definite interest through the maker fair and through our maker space that there's you know, this push for the maker movement. But doing it by yourself is not enough. The community. We've noticed that, um, well, just a little quick story. The other day, um, don't judge me in any way, but um, I watched this documentary called Happy. <laughs> It's actually really very good. But there's one thing that I learned. I got this quote from the documentary. And it says, social bonding, social interactions, and corporations is programmed to be intrinsically rewarding to human. So there's actually a physiological need for us to be interactive with other people. You know, the guy that has the Skype ID that's called Macho Man 244, he's actually desperately in need to connect to people in the real world. Another anecdote, which is that I read in the Scientific America, uh, they were doing this experiment in the 90s, no? And there was this monkey, and this monkey had all these electrodes poking in his head. And in the screen, the scientists wanted to see how he uses a tool. So he was given a nut and a, and a little tool to open the nut. And registered in the computer screen is the movement of his activity. And then up in the same room, um, uh, an assistant walked in, and the monkey dropped the nut. And now he's simply observing the assistant who just walked in. Now the assistant picked up this nut and he started cracking at it. And lo and behold, what is registered in the computer is as if the monkey, simply by observing, has the same acti brain activity as if he was cracking the nut himself. 
This is what they discovered called the mirror neurons. And for me, that is like astonishing because this is what we've been trying to work as a community of makers, that if you make something simply because you're in the same space, that is impacting your physiological you know, brain activities. That's, for us, that's pretty profound. So we've kind of narrowed down to four types of people. For us, there's the non-maker and the non-collaborative people. Well, that's not very interesting, right? So we're going to skip that person. Um, there's the maker, but the non-collaborative person. This person must be a genius to be able to succeed what he does, because he doesn't want to really collaborate, uh, but he's really good at what he does. And then, most of us are actually in this category. We're non-makers, but we're collaborative. And we're non-makers we're non not because we're not able to be makers, we're non-makers because education and our society taught us to be not makers. And our goal is really to all become makers and to be, to be collaborative. And so the idea is to form collaborative communities of makers that make things happen together. I found this poster, which is the Maker Manifesto from the Maker Fair of Africa. And I love this poster because this is kind of sum up of um, everything that we've talked about. If you looked at the above sort of quote, it says, if you want something you've never had, then you've got to do something you've never done, which is so true. And I also wanted to pinpoint four, of the, four points of the manifesto. Number one, that we will, we will wait for no one. Number three, we will see challenges as opportunities. Number seven, we will share what we make and help each other make what we share. And the last but not least, we will remake Africa with our own hands. So my question is, so can't we do that for Barcelona? Can't we do that for Spain? So what we want isn't to find jobs for this 55%. We want to convert them into self-sufficient, passionately driven, fully capable, and highly motivated individuals. We want to convert everyone to be makers <clears throat> of Barcelona. At the end of the day, we're all makers. Thank you.